<laughs> oh, great. <laughs> well, we've got a great job. Uh, uh, so we're going to be in Matthew. Uh, we're, we're in Matthew chapter 8 today. 8 and, and, chapter, and verse 28. Um, when, in a couple of the main the main theme, that, and I don't want to get away from the main theme. I like to teach I like to teach uh, the scripture in context, and so we're looking at the life of Christ. And Matthew is really looking at Jesus having the authority as king. You know, king of king of, king, of, king of everything, king of heaven, earth, and under the earth. You know, he is king of all. And so, um, and I've talked about you know Matt, the book of Matthew being a, a book of the kingdom and its king. And, and it's uh, really amazing because we're going to get, so uh, this past couple of weeks, what we've done is we, uh, we went ahead and we've, we've talked about how he went ahead and he taught about the kingdom of heaven during uh, the uh, uh, Sermon of the Mount. He did that. After he came down from the Sermon of the Mount, out the mountain, he encountered certain things that showed and demonstrate his authority as king. He did. So first of all, he was able to, he, he was lord and king over leprosy. That was, that was easy. It was just poof. Leprosy was gone. And then uh, the centurion servant was healed. So he has the power over disease is what, what, what we see that is happening here. Uh, his mother-in-law is healed. And, uh, and, and then the, the seas are still. He has power over nature. God has power over nature. In the Old Testament, it talked about, you know, how he was able to hold uh, the, the day, the sun back for a whole day so that, so that Joshua could have victory over the enemy. So he has power all over all this kind of stuff. And the Bible teaches us that God is, you know, that God can, God is able to do anything. You know, with God, all things are possible. Everything. Nothing is impossible with God. So we, we find that. And so now we're, we're getting into a, an area that, you know, I think that is really interesting. And uh, so now he's also Lord and King over the spiritual world. Yes. The spiritual world. He's, 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 he's in charge of that as well. And so we're going to look at the story of the demoniac. It's called, the, you know, Jesus and the de de demoniac. But what we want to see here is his authority over the demonic powers. And I'm going to have to give you a little bit of a background because, uh, uh, every, you know, a lot of people don't understand this, this portion of it. We're going, to, we're going to talk about angels and demons, you know, demonology and angelology. You know, and you, you get those kind of courses, you know, when you go to uh, uh, that kind of stuff. They are very real. They are very real forces. Yes. They, they are very real forces. And we need to we need to remember that. And, and a lot of people don't don't acknowledge some of these forces. You know, they all they all throw everything into mental health. You know, mental yeah. health. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. God created his body, soul and spirit and spirit, spirit. Okay, there's a spiritual side of this whole all of creation. There's a there's a spiritual side of creation. We have to acknowledge the fact that there's a, a spiritual side of things. So when it, the Bible says that God, okay, what? what God has uh, God created the angels. God, right off the bat, we have to understand God created all things. He created uh, living beings that were angels. And then, uh, you know, so they were this, they were spirits, just like God is a spirit. This was before, you know, that we were created in a ca in a time uh, in a time and space capsule. Spirits live in this other dimension that's just different. It's just, you know, it's spiritual world. And so what we find is we're locked in this time and space capsule, and these spirits, you know, kind of tend to go back and forth. Un until you know, until something happened, and then Satan was sent down into that, locked into that place. But that's you know, that's what was happening. And everybody, you know, everybody in heaven was was having a really, really good time. God created everything to be in perfect harmony and in perfect, you know, just in perfection. Yeah. And and you know, and, and I, I like this kind of stuff because one of the things that a lot of people I get I get asked a lot of questions, especially from the younger generation. I get a lot of questions. You know, where did sin come from? Where did wickedness come from? I'm going to tell you something. You're going to have to pause and think about this for just a little bit. But wickedness and sin came from God. It did. But, you know, the Bible says that there is no wickedness in him. No, it came from him. And I'll, I'll, share, I'll show you why. Because one of the things that he did is he created angels with a free will. 
Anytime you have free will, guess what? You have the seed of wickedness. You do? So, you know, I don't know how many, you know, we think in time and space. I don't even know how to address this one here just yet. But, you know, in their existence up in heaven, you know, all of a sudden, Satan comes up and he says, you know what? I think my throne, I think I, think I can raise a throne higher than God's throne. Yeah. yeah. He did. He, re he rebelled against God. He rebelled against God by choice. Yep. And by free will. That rebellion was the seed that set sin in motion. Yep. It was the thing. With God, God is perfect. And God is love. And what Satan was thinking about was a coup, a rebellion, coming against the, you know, the, the authority and the throne of God. That's, that's, that's what happened. So now you have angels and, you know, and, 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 and fallen angels. You have, now, you know, and I, I, I like, I like, I, I like the title that what was his name? Uh, Brown, Brown came up with uh, angels and demons. You know, I love, I love those topics. I really do. We have to acknowledge that there is a spiritual world, folks, in, in our, in our, in that area. Now, because God is creator of those spirits, guess who's in authority of those spirits? God is. And, and that's that's where that's where Matthew is at in this in this thing. As we go through this this story of the demoniac, we have to understand that God God is in God is in charge. God has God is king over that realm too. And once you begin to understand this realm a little better, you don't have to be afraid of it because now you understand how it really how how it works. I mean, you have to spend a little bit more time than we have today to be able to go through. You know, demons and angels, angels and demons. We have to, you know, but that's that's what happened. So, so because God, and, and I have to tell you this, I everywhere I go, I, it's just amazing. I uh, I just enjoy sharing my uh, the, the 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 teachings that God has given us. So what so what what does God do? You know, now He's got a rebellious angel on His hands. He can go ahead and he and because God is love, but God is also just. He needs to do something about it or else you're going to have rebellion and a takeover and it's it's just going to go crazy. You're, you're going to basically have anarchy in heaven is what's going to happen. So what he does is he creates another creature. In the Hebrews, it talks about God created man a little lower than the angels. He created him a little, a little lower than the angels. So why did he do that? And this is where I really, I love sharing this part of the story because what he did was he was, he intended to judge Satan for his rebellion and, and completely annihilate him like he should be annihilated because he brought sin and darkness into a, 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 a creation that God had created. And he brought every evil intent of man into existence. Yep. Oh my gosh, I've heard testimonies after testimonies about what man is capable of doing to the, the vulnerable. It is just amazing what, what wickedness and evil can come from. And, and you know, people celebrate that kind of stuff all the time. Man, God created man so that God could still keep his attribute of love intact. Because if he would have judged Satan from the top down in the way that he would have wanted to, he would have created fear across the heavens. What he did is he created, he created man lower than the angels, a subspecies to defeat Satan from the bottom up. Because the promise was right in the beginning when, when the, the promise was right in the beginning. When, remember when Satan, yeah, when the when the serpent and and uh, and and the woman, he said, uh, you know, uh, 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 to the woman, your seed shall crush the head of uh, Satan, uh, Satan's head or this uh, of the serpent's head, and the serpent will crush the heel. I mean, no, crush the head and 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 bite the and bite the heel. Okay, that was the promise of judgment. That's what happened. That's why God created man was so that He could judge. Satan from the bottom up, the spiritual beings. 
So now you have two, two creative things going on, but one of them is made in the image of God. Angels are not created in the image of God. They're just angels. And it's just amazing to be able to see that. So now you have, so then Jesus comes along and he says, look, I, I remember when Satan was kicked out of heaven, I saw him fall from heaven and he, and he was encapsulated in this time in this time and space, time and space capsule. That's where we're at now. At one point, Satan had the ability to go back and forth between, you know, between heaven and earth, back and forth. And you realize that in the story of Job, yep. where Satan, you know, when God asked Satan, where are, where have you been? He's been, I've been walking to and fro, to and fro in the earth. And he says, well, have you considered my servant Job? Ugh. Yeah. And he says, yeah, he says, yeah. He says, he doesn't believe in you for nothing. He says, you've got him so, so secure, I can't even touch him. I can't even come close to him. I like that statement, by the way. Because what it, mean, what it means is that, that the, the demonic world and the spiritual world can't even come close to you. Unless God withdraws his hand. Folks, everything that's happening in the world today that's a problem, it has a lot, it has, it has, it has a demonic, uh, you know, that, that's a real, real problem, it has a demonic um, uh, foundation to it. It really does. It really does. Amen. You know, they stopped, a, they stopped the shooter up here in Surprise just a uh, day before yesterday. They, 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 they found the guy, they arrested him. Um, you know, there was this story up here, and I kept thinking, you know, I was just thinking, that's all demonic. Who in the world wants to go into a school and shoot up innocent children? Yeah. Oh, I get upset at that. It's unjust. It's wicked. It's evil. It is. It's evil. And so, you know, that is nothing but wickedness. Now, when you start thinking about these kind of things, these are spirits. And in this story here, you're going to find out that you're going to find out several different things, which is really cool. You know, because one of the things you find out is that spirits can only operate in this world if they, if they, they can oppress. They can, they can depress, oppress people that just make life really, really miserable. Yeah. Or they can pose us. Yes. Once, once a person's possessed, it, the spirit comes in, takes over the life, and they go off and, and bomb and shoot, and come up with crazy things like Islam and things like that. They do. Oh, oh yeah. That's where Islam, That's where the Islamic teaching came from. It's just it's 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 uh, doctrines of demons. The Bible calls that in 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 Second Timothy doctrines of demons. Yeah. Okay, so we, we're we're gonna. Be, I just needed to give you a little background. This is uh, the Jews knew understood this kind of stuff. They they understood this kind of stuff. So in our modern world, you know, we recognize psychology, but do we recognize demonology? No. No. No, we don't. No, it's not taste. And, and what we need to do is understand that that's part of our world as well. Yes. Now, on the counterpart of that, you know, uh, on the counterpart of that, and I want to I make sure that we get a, uh, we get a balance here, uh, because I love Christmas. I love Easter. Though I love Easter and Christmas. Those are my two favorite uh, uh, holidays. And the reason why is because of all of the angelic activity that's taking place. Angels are spirits too. Oh, yes. They're God's messengers. They are messengers of fire, it says. And they are, they're out there to protect us. Yes. In fact, in the book of Daniel, it talks about, in the book of Daniel, it was, Daniel was, uh, it was, uh, yeah, Daniel was the one that was praying uh, because he didn't understand something that Jeremiah had written. And he was praying to God. Now, do you remember that one phrase where Jesus said to Nathaniel, you will see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man? Yep. Anytime a prayer goes up, an angel is dispatched to, to go get something for you and bring it back down. After 21 days of fasting, Daniel, yeah. uh, all of a sudden, uh, uh, after that, Dan, Daniel fasted for 21 days. And then after that, an angel showed up. Yep. He had a name. His name was... Uh, Gabriel. Yep. Gabriel is the messenger angel. He's the messaging angel. Now, he referred to Michael the angel. Yes. He is the warring angel. Yes. Okay? Lucifer was the, the illuminating angel, but he fell. Okay? So what, what was happening was the, 
the uh, the enemy angels now they have fallen angels they're the enemy now against God because they were still trying to pull the coup off they're still trying to do the same thing they're still trying to do that so when it talks about that, that you know that there's the heavenlies that they 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 they're, they're in the heavenlies it, that means that they're uh, they're not on the other side in heaven they're in, in the in the atmosphere and it, and that's very clear in Daniel it says it, it was um, gosh come on clear of your head Dios <laughs> Gabriel said Daniel your prayers were heard the first day you prayed he said, but, he said, but prince of Persia. the prince, the, 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 the principalities and the powers have, have withheld us. Michael's had to battle these things so that I could get through for 21 days. The battle in the heavens were going on like crazy. And he finally got, got through. And he said, first day that you pray, your prayers were answered. Folks, when we pray, angels get dispatched. It's it's really cool, the, you know. And then and then you you, you remember the story of uh, you remember the story of Elijah and the servant, you know, and the chariots of fire and the angels out there. Folks, we are surrounded by angels. This is Amen. in the spiritual world. We're surrounded by angels all the yeah. time. And every once in a while, I have to okay, Lord, I know that I'm surrounded by your angels. I have to understand that. You know, when things are coming my way and I'm feeling like there's some kind of evil stuff going on around me and stuff like that, I have to remember that God has the angels and they are to minister to those that will inherit salvation. They are. They're spirits too, you know. So just to counter that kind of thing, I think that was, that's just kind of neat that we can, we have that in our disposal. I just, I just, you need to understand that. So you as an heir, you as a son of God have angels at your disposal all the time. And I can swear that I have squashed a few of them with my car. <laughs> you know, I have. So let's go with, with a little bit of that understanding. There's so much more that we can go ahead and talk about and that kind of stuff. But let's go. Uh, uh, I want to, you know, Matthew chapter 8, verse 20, uh, 28. Um, it starts there. But this is a very limited uh, story. Let's go over to Mark chapter 5. Because it really, it really uh, opens, it really opens the uh, the story a lot more, and I only have, you know, I only have a few more, a few more. So then came to the other side of the sea. They, then they came to the other side of Galilee. Uh, they came to the other side of the sea, the Sea of Galilee, to the country of Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Now watch this. Watch watch how they describe this man, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could uh, bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. Nobody could tame this guy. He was, you know, a lot of people would say that he was crazy, insane. Uh, uh, you know, just what, there would be a lot of names to, for, for him. You know, he, he, is, he is among the tombs. In fact, the other, the other incident, it, called, it, it says that he would run around without any clothes on, naked, tearing, tearing upon himself. He was in self-destruct mode as well. And, and, and it says always, always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying out and cutting himself. Doesn't that sound like an insane person out there that would be a classic uh, you know, insane person. Cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped Jesus. Yeah. Now what you see is Jesus coming out of the boat first. They're running towards each other. You know? And, 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 and I love this. I, I love this picture is because, you know, most of the time when you start talking about demons and angels and all that kind of stuff, People don't know how to deal with this kind of stuff. And it's kind of like, ooh, you know, ooh. <laughs> it's not that way. Jesus has the authority over uh, principalities and powers, folks. Jesus has the authority over principalities and powers. He created them. Now, you're going to hear some things here in just a little bit. So he runs out there to meet the demonic. 
Now remember, he had power over the sea, and the disciples followed, were following with him. They witnessed all of this. And I don't know if you have ever witnessed any, any demonic powers or not. They are interesting. They are very interesting. Yeah, it's amazing. It, it, it's, 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 a, it's a warfare of a different class. It really is. You know, the neat thing about this, this kind of stuff <laughs> is that it's real. It, it's very real. And it, it, it'll manifest in a lot of different ways. I have two stories that I have to tell you just about, you know, because we're dealing with the de demon possessed guy. Yeah. I remember I was asked to counsel with somebody, you know, for marriage counseling back in the church that I was in. And uh, this one young, young man, you know, African American, American man, and I'm going to say that with a purpose because um, very strong, in, out of, coming out of the military and that kind of stuff. And we got to talking about marriage stuff, you know, and how he could better his marriage and be a better man and that kind of stuff. And, and we went through about, I don't know, 40, 40 minutes of that kind of marriage counseling. And I said, why don't we stop and pray? We need Jesus. You know, you really, I, I need Jesus. We all need Jesus to be able to help you through this thing. And so we, all I did was got to start praying. And uh, I felt like I needed to get up and put my hands on him. And we were sitting in these round chairs that had this rattan stuff around, you know, this the, the, the rattan uh, braiding on the on the chair. And he's sitting in there, and I, I, I'm praying for him. And I lay my hands on him, and all of a sudden he starts getting tense. I mean, there's a tension building up in him. And he start, and he grabs that rattan, and you can hear it start ripping apart. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to stop. And he did. It just kind of relaxed. Just stop. The same guy, you know, same, same, same guy. Um, one day we were, we were worshiping, and we need to be aware of how they all work, uh, because sometimes they can overwhelm their host. Uh, they, they can overwhelm their host. When I say overwhelm their host, you know one of the things that they do is they'll they'll fall they'll fall down on the floor. I mean, we've been in worship. We were we were we were in a, a Worship. I mean, we were being lifted up. We were, it was just worship time, worship time. I was a new pastor. I was just brand new, but I was just studying this kind of stuff. Okay? So, uh, so and, and pastors looking at a church of 250, 300 people, something maybe like that. I don't know, maybe 200. Anyway, this guy starts flopping around on the floor. <laughs> right on the front. And so the elders get around him and they start getting, you know, together. And I'm now just the new ordained, the new ordained guy there, you know. And, uh, you know, they, they commanded it to stop. And they got him on his feet, kind of clear-headed. And he, and he looks at me and he says, Lupe, he says, um, he says I, got, I got a service to run. He says, you want to take him back into the back room and uh, deal with him? And, and Pastor put his hands on him and says, Lord... Uh, all the authority that I have, and you know, the, uh, he basically just put his anointing on me, put it on me, and, and said, "Here, here it is." Okay, uh, and use it, Lupe. There you go. <laughs> now this guy, now this guy, big. I mean, he's he, he's got a lot of muscle. You know, I could take him on. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so there was a team of us that went in 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 in, in there. And, uh, and we started praying for him. And he began to manifest. I mean, just begin to growl, begin. Some of the, some of the, some of the growling that you guys have heard from the left yes. on this abortion stuff, yeah. on the winning of Trump and stuff like that, folks, make no mistake. Come on. It's demonic. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Make no mistake. Right. <laughs> it is. It's, it's yeah. demonic. And I can, I, can, I can smile and laugh at that because I understand it. I, I understand this the world. I do understand the world a little bit. Well, we got to pray for this guy, and he was, he was manifesting. It. You can hear. It. Now, watch. It, this, is, this is how it goes, especially with possession. And this is where the demoniac was at at this point. Folks, it's real. This, uh, this demon was so entrenched deep bends were so entrenched in the life of this man. You could hear his voice. We would ask him to speak, you know, 
uh, uh, and I was going to say his name, but I'd rather not. Uh, I, I asked him to, you know, you know, you got to say something. You know, fight this thing. Speak, speak it out. Come against it. Come against this thing. It would, he would start speaking it with his natural voice. All of a sudden, he'd go hell, and, and that voice would slowly go down, and another voice would come forward. Oh, oh yeah, you could, you could, you could. It was crazy. It was just amazing. Uh, the neat thing about this, folks, is that we have power over those kinds of things. We, we really do. We really do have the power over them. Because it's from an outside world, and again, I want you to think about angels and demons. Think about the good angels. They're with you. They're with you. Now, any t every time uh, a manifestation would come up, it would shock my, my natural sense. This is the way that I operate, okay? It would surprise my natural senses. Boom! It's just kind of like, ooh, what am I dealing with? And then all of a sudden, the the Spirit of God would come forward. Come on. The Spirit of God would come forward, and I knew I was operating in the authority of God. Yes. Amen. It was there. Amen. It was just like a shield that would come up. Okay? It was just like, oh, okay, that's what I'm dealing with. And then you would know how to navigate in that world. So we, we prayed and we prayed and things happened. You know, he, he threw up a bit and then things happened. And then he went out. He was completely out. But uh, you have to realize you're not just dealing with one demon. There's always demons around you. And there was a fellow Christian that was with us, that was working with us there. And, and it is exhausting when you move into that realm. It is exhausting. Yes, it is. This guy, out of nowhere, he says, this is not all real. This is not real. He's just, he's just sleeping. <laughs> right, you know where we're going with that. It's just kind of like, that was another demon speaking. Another, and, and you'll hear it. You, you, you know, Jesus is going to have conversation. Jesus is going to have a conversation with this demon here in just a little bit. What, and, it, and it hit home with all of us. I don't know why. I don't know how. But all of a sudden, I could feel that shield go. It dropped. I, I, we were exhausted. He planted a seed. Boom. I could feel that shield come down. That demon sensed it, came right up, grabbed me from my lapels and put me against the wall. Bang! I'm looking at him and I'm saying, in the name of Jesus, I said, put me down! <laughs> put me down in the name of Jesus! And the other guys, you know, I'm glad that I had some people that were just as strong and burly as he was. They just, they just took him down, you know? And then, so, they're, so now they're, they're wrestling with him over here. I'm kind of like, and, 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 and the moment that he started coming at me, boom, I could feel this thing come back up again. Yeah. It's a spiritual dynamic, folks. And I want, I want you just to know how some of this operates. Because a lot of times churches won't talk about it. We need to understand how these things work. And how simple, you know, simple, simple things. I'm going to give you something else that you can use as well. So that was, that, and I, you know, and this same guy, I went into his house and the windows were rattling and stuff like that. It was just crazy. This this guy had some stuff going. He really did have some stuff going. But anyway, finish the story. This other guy that spoke, you know, this I mean, he, he planted a seed of doubt here. I looked at him and he I said, You get out. Get out. I said, I don't need you here. You're 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 endangering all of us. You get out of here. I'm not, no, 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 really. Now, now it's the real guy speaking, not the demon. And I said, I don't care. You are out of here. And I asked another guy to ask, escort him out. And so we finally got to deal with this guy enough to be able to, we dealt with some more stuff and got it, but we knew we were dealing with multiple entities inside of him. For some reason, either it came through heritage, it came through, and because he, he had come, and had celebrated some of his heritage, which is deep African. Honestly, that's why I mentioned the African American. He was going into the dark arts. Folks, do not explore. Don't don't think that you can explore the the, the dark arts. Don't go there. Don't go there. I'm going to tell you that right now. 
I've got, you know, I, you know, because I've taught the religions of the world and that kind of stuff, I've, I've gone through up to a certain point, and then I'm going, uh-uh, I'm not going any further than that. Even though I understand it, I would rather let Jesus handle that part, yeah. the authority part of that, because I know that there's even darker areas there that I would rather not go that far. Yeah. Okay? Just don't, I don't, me, I just don't want to go there. Some others want to go all the way. They want, they want to keep exploring. I want to stay right here. <laughs> now, just in simple terms, I mean, in simple, and just, so, that, that problem stayed with the, you know, with that man for a long time. He, he wanted to, but he kept inviting them back. And you know what Jesus said about, you know, seven demons greater than the first one. He kept inviting them back. And, and, and there is a, you have to counsel, and you have to, you know, you have to, you, you have to counsel them how to deal with this and what, how they work, and you have to deal with them and how, uh, you know, how to deal with that after you've been delivered out from some of that kind of stuff. But he wouldn't listen. He was listening to the demons. And so it became a perpetual problem. Tell you where, tell you where he's at right now. Somebody can guess. He's in prison. He's in prison right now. Yeah. So anyway, uh, just 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 a little bit of a okay. There you go. It always gets quiet when we start talking about this subject. You know, it's just kind of interesting. Okay. Now uh, you have to learn how to recognize. You know, these, these kind of entities working around us. You know, when I was up there in uh, uh, Phoenix this week, uh, you know, our my, my landlord brings in a, in and out a lot of people. You know, they're, she, she's got a BNB and she's got a lot of friends and they come in and out. They're a little hippie-ish, you know? And uh, and they were talking about, they were talking about uh, spirit forces. Oh, you're, I'm talking about angels. And he says, oh, you're talking, there's other terms that, you know, you, there's other terms that are out there that describe these kinds of entities. And he, and he was bringing those terms up, and I recognized them. And I and, and he says, "Oh, they're they're like spirit forces." And I said, "Bingo!" I said, You're, "You got that right." And it's just amazing. Well, one day my wife and I went. Uh, my wife and I went up to uh, uh, Phoenix, and uh, uh, we were homeschooling. We were new homeschoolers. We were going to go up to a conference up to Phoenix, and I procrastinator that I was back then, and am on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> I get procrastinating, you know. I was supposed to have registered a long time ago and gotten the hotel and everything else. There was all that for us. And the day, you know, the day before the conference started, I told Twinkie, let's go. We're gonna go. And so we packed up and left. There was not a hotel, I mean, there was not a hotel anywhere that we could find, except for the Blue Goose. <laughs> <laughs> You know, with the name like a blue, blue goose. You know, it was just like, oh man, can I look at the room first? <laughs> Do you have an hourly rate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was just one of those things. And I, uh, here we are. God calls us to move in air, all circles and everywhere else. But, you know, we are new Christians at that time and that kind of stuff. And we have, you know, we have a little bit of authority on some of this kind of stuff. And I told you how some of this demonic stuff comes around us and, and can influence our lives. Like when, you know, I thought my wife was having an affair and, you know, the devil came in and, and accused her of, you know, that kind of stuff. So, but this instant, we got into the room, we slept that night, we went to our conference and uh, uh, back into the room again that night. And the next morning, both of us got uh, agitated. There was just a real agitation going in our lives. It was just like, oh man, I'm just miserable. I, nothing would please me that day and everything else. By the time we got ready and got out of the hotel, I had her crying. I had her crying. And I I don't do that. I mean, I mean, you know, we're very, very compatible. And I mean, we went back and forth a little while and I had her crying and we had the most miserable breakfast at Denny's that morning. <laughs> and as we went through that day and conference for homeschools and everything else, I've been praying and thinking, what in the world's going on here? <coughs> and then I and then then I felt like the Lord says, you know what? When you get back into that room, you pray. You pray. What who knows what happened 
those realms? What was invited into those areas? Do you realize that that demon for uh, the demon demon uh, demon you know the demons have territories? They have territories. They do. They stick around certain areas, and when they're invited, there's certain activity taking place in certain places. Boy, they, they gather there and have parties and bother us Christians. <laughs> we we walked into that room and every room that I go into, even this time that we were that I was gone. We got on our knees. This was physical. We got on our knees. We held hands. And, and we chose to agree. We agreed <coughs> that we are binding the demons right now in Jesus' name. And whatever has happened in this room, you cleanse it right now in Jesus' name. And through the power of your blood, I pray that you move every power and principality out of this room in Jesus' name right now. We took charge. We took over. Father, we dedicate this room to our use right now. And, remember Michael? <laughs> Father, appoint the warring angels. It's, a, it's our prayer that helps uh, 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 help, help bring that about. And so we appointed that. You know what? That agitation lifted. We were able to sleep. And we were able to rest the rest of the time. And every room, if, if she doesn't remind me, um, and she does a lot of times have to remind me, because I'm usually all focused on what I'm going to do. Yeah, we need to pray. You're right. We need to pray. And so when we dedicate homes, you know, when we go off and, and dedicate homes and stuff like that, some people, when we've had people say, there's a ghost in this house. I don't know how many times I've been called to go de-ghost the house. <laughs> And all you, do, you do the same thing. It's a prayer. You, you command them to leave. And you address those powers. And if certain things are happening, they reveal who they are but what they, by what they do and what they say. It was amazing to watch that man's personality just go down and another voice come up. A guttural voice just come forth. Yeah, it's just amazing to see that. And, and so... We we need to take we need to take it you know uh, we, we, uh, you know our weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds strongholds there's areas in our areas that have that kind of that kind of thing and so we need to be able to go in there by uh, casting down every imagination and every thought that comes against the knowledge of God like I said you know the Every thought and imagination. Who would have thought that that one guy wanted to go and shoot kids? And then we call it mental health. No. No, 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 no. You ain't going to get... I got to tell you another story. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, they're... And they're you know, they're <laughs> oh, I can tell you story after story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it, it's, uh, and and you know what? We have, the Bible says to pray and uh, be alert, be alert and pray at the last in the last days. I was sitting in my office one. I was sitting in my office one day, one afternoon, you know, here, and all of a sudden I look up and I didn't hear this person, this little lady come in. She was a homeless lady, you know, and and you've seen some of the homeless person people out there, but you 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 see some of them that have been really really homeless for a long time their skin kind of almost turned leathery they've been out in the elements and just their hair's kind of ruffled over me and i looked at her eyes and i go uh oh <laughs> first thing out of her mouth she says they're after me how many of you have ever talked to a homeless person that has said they're after me and i said who she said washington dc <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. And uh, and I, the moment I heard those words and I saw what was in her eyes, I brought. And this is what you do: you bring the name of Jesus up as many times as you can, and mention His blood, because the demons hate that. Yes, they do. They hate that. And I said, you know, um, and I told her, I said something like, you know, I can't help you. She goes, why? I said, because Jesus is the only one that can do that. 
And I would throw that. And then she'd go back to her narrative, come back, and I'd say, well, what do you need? I knew at that point that I wasn't going to be able to really help her with some, unless I had some time, some real time with her and others with me, because I'm not Jesus, you know? I'm not, I'm not the Lord, and I know my limitations in some of that, but I knew that I could control her. Finally got her calmed down, and I did pray. We were able to calm, you could, you could tell the agitation that was around her, and then all of a sudden it, it came down. She was, at, she was at peace where I could actually talk to her and then have a little bit of a conversation. I said, what is it that you really need? What do you need right now that I can help you with? She was able to get that peace, honestly. She was able to get that peace. She says, I'm hungry. Now I, I, got, to, I got to her. You know, I got to what she needed. And I need some cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, well. Okay. That's the least of the problems. <laughs> Honestly, it was. And that wasn't the day before. That was the day when the, you know, that was back away. When uh, restaurants still would sell cigarettes. And I felt that she was safe enough that I could put her in my car and take her down to the restaurants. I mean, she was able to find some peace. It took a little while to really work this kind of stuff up. So I took her down to one of the restaurants. And I gave the, you know, and I, I gave the, 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 the lady enough money to be able to uh, cover the meal. And I said, let her buy cigarettes if she wants. I mean, she, I'm not going to break her of that habit or anything like that. You know, it's just, you know, that's a whole other story. And, um, and that was it. So months later, I hear another story. The same lady shows up at the DES office. Now, these people think about these kind of people with mental illness, right? <laughs> so she gets into the DS office to the director, and she's talking to the director about their after me. And this guy dismisses her and dismisses everything that's going on with her problems. The demon inside of her tells her to crawl over his desk, grab him by the neck, and start choking him. It's exactly what she did. <laughs> she crawls over the desk and grabs him and starts choking him. The staff comes in and has to pull her off, call the police, and then you know they have to deal with her. And then eventually, I'm sure that she moved on. But but that's what happens, folks. Is when you, you don't do that. And I kind of chuckled a little bit in that, at that at that outcome because they didn't know what they were dealing with. <laughs> it was kind of like. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> it was a poor guy. Oh my gosh, I'm, I, I'm all over my time already. <laughs> it's, but, but it can be a very simple thing. Now, if you ever feel like you're, you know, you're, you're, you're getting, you, you, you've been targeted by these things, just pray in the name of Jesus. Stand. Stand on the name of Jesus and say, you cannot bother me. Leave me alone. You get, you get away from me. Now, the story of the demoniac, you know, it's, it's a legion. There's a whole, a legion is, is 1,000 demons was in this one person, okay? Jesus sailed across the sea to get, 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 get center it, okay? It was a Gentile area. How do you know it was a Gentile? Jews don't raise, Jews don't herd pigs. No, no, They're no. not pig farmers, guys. That is the most unclean meat that Jews can have. So watch, watch this. Watch, watch this. Now I want you to, I want you to just really quick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into this. And he says, um, um, uh, when they saw him from afar, they worshipped him, and they, and and he cried out with a loud voice. Okay, this is the man speaking, but it's the demon speaking. He says, verse seven. What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Who told you I was Jesus? Yeah. The Son of the Most High God. I implore you. By God that you do not torment me. He was the lead, he was the lead demon, okay? For he said unto him, Come out of him, uh, come out of the man, unclean spirit. He identified him as an unclean spirit. Then he asked him, What is your name? Jesus asked him, What is your name? The demon spoke back and said, My name is Legion. Uh -huh. And I've seen some dramatized, you know, movies and things like that. That's pretty cool. You know, it's really cool. And he answered him, said, My name is Legion. We are many. And he and the the and and the demon, the lead demon begged him 
earnestly that he would not send him out of the country. You know why? They're territorial. And the principalities and powers, and there's a, a there's a um, what do they call that? Hierarchy. hierarchy. Yes, a hierarchy. There's a hierarchy of power, like in the military. They have, there's power, you know, there, there's staff, there's there's um, yeah, ranks yeah. of demons. And he said, Don't send, send don't send me out of the country. Now there's a, a large herd of swine feeding there, and the demons begged him, saying, Send us into the swine. And they did. And there was a whole herd of them. And the herd ran into the sea and drowned them. Yep. Drowned themselves. That was that's just amazing. So all of those demons were controlling this one guy. It's just amazing. Now, Mary, one of the Marys that followed Jesus, had seven demons. Well, we don't know if it was Mary Magdalene or not. It's assumed that it was Mary Magdalene. You know, because oh, I can oh, I can keep going, but I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> so, so the the point here, but the point that Mark, that Matthew is making in his narrative is that Jesus has authority over demonic powers. Yes. In the book of Matthew, one of the things you're going to see is that there's this is the first of five accounts wow. of demonic incidences. Yes, and Jesus knows that. Folks, if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you don't have him in your life, you are a sitting duck. Yeah. Yes. You are. Yeah. Once you realize that, you are a sitting duck. You can be subjected to all of that stuff, and you have no power. None. Zero. Nada. <coughs> and that's why it's important that we understand what's going on, you know, with... When, when we talk about, you know, spiritual warfare and that kind of stuff, that's kind of the stuff that we're dealing with. However, I also want you to balance this, this, this teaching and this, you know, this, this time together with the angels, folks. See, I want you to balance it off. A lot of times, a lot of times when people go through this kind of stuff and they, they don't balance it off with the angels. I, I know that the angels are there on my behalf. All I have to do is call them on the, in the name of Jesus and they're there. Yes. All I have to do is say a prayer, and they're moving. Yes. We have to understand that that they're, they're that they're on our on our side. So we left the physical time and space realm for just a little bit, and and went into the spiritual realm. And so uh, that's all we did. And if you ever need any help, and you feel like you're you know if you feel like you've got something going on in your life that kind of way, uh, call on me, and I'll call on a couple of us, and we can pray for you. You know, you don't have to feel like you've got to battle this alone. There's no way you need to do that, ever. Just call us and we'll be praying for you. Um, because it, it's, it's something, and it's simple. Once, we understand, once you understand, it's, it's, it's a simple thing. The people heard that the, uh, that, that the demoniac had been delivered. And they came to see Jesus and the demon, the demon possessed man. Yeah. He was in his right <laughs> mind and he was clothed. Where, where does this insanity of nudity and nudity, nudist camps come from? It's, it's not going back to uh, 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 the, the Garden of Eden. No. We're living in a different realm than the Garden of Eden. It's, it's demonic. It is. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's power, power, there's power in the name. And we would take the power of the blood. Yeah. yeah. This is one of our favorite topics. Oh, it is. I know it is. <laughs> I, I, know. I, I know it is. My, and, and think, you know, I love it all. I love it all. So, Father, we come before you today, and we thank you, Lord God, for We thank you, Father, for your, uh, for your word. Father, and revealing to us the environment, the landscape that we live in, Lord. Now that we are Christians, we understand this uh, kind of stuff. And I thank you, Father, that uh, we can recognize that. And Lord, I pray that you watch over each one of us. Yes. Father, um, in, just surround each one of us like you did Job. God, that you put a hedge around us that nothing can touch us, oh Lord God. And Father, help us to be quick to recognize things that are going on and uh, also be quick to be able to call on our prayer warriors and uh, also uh, uh, just share in the victories. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week.
Yeah. Okay, we're going to sing a song.